Hello friends. Bonjour les amis. How are you? Comment ça va? Namaste. Adab. Sat Sri Akal. Salam. Kaise hain aap log? Today's video is uh, mainly for those young working people who have uh, to decide between two different saving accounts in Canada, RRSP, which is Registered Retirement Saving Plan, and TFSA, Tax-Free Saving Account. We all know that uh, these two accounts offer uh, investments to grow within the account uh, tax-free, but the question comes that which account should investors uh, contribute uh, or park their money while working? Our RSP account is uh, a tax sheltered account or tax advantage account because uh, whatever the amount a person contributes to RSP, that amount becomes uh, tax free. So the, the saving account RSP was established in Canada in 1957 and in 2020, 18% of uh, gross income or to a maximum of twenty-seven thousand two hundred thirty dollars uh, for two thousand and twenty can be contributed into RSP account. And suppose if a person's income is uh, hundred thousand, so eighteen percent of uh, that will be eighteen thousand. So that eighteen thousand, if the person contributes into RSP, that eighteen thousand there will be no tax. So if he has paid tax already, uh, Canada Revenue Agency. Uh, uh, returns that uh, taxes back to the investor. Uh, RSP account uh, is a tax advantage account, but it comes with certain conditions. Uh, for example, only people over the age of 18 and working, they can contribute into RSP. Although, I mean, if they don't invest in uh, one year or two years or any other year, their room carries forward to the next years and they can contribute all whenever they want. But uh, if they want to withdraw the money from RSP at whatever time, whatever, at, so they pay in taxes at that time on their withdrawals. So suppose if you have contributed RSP in year one and in year two you want to withdraw that money, so you have to pay uh, taxes on the withdrawals. But since uh, money grows within the RSP account tax-free, so but, but until unless you don't withdraw, you don't pay any taxes. One more important factor is that the person, if he doesn't want to invest into his own RSP account, he can open a spousal account, a spousal RSP account, and he can contribute his uh, share of income into a spousal RSP account, and. Uh, uh, and uh, also, this does not uh, impact negatively the contribution room for the spouse. Uh, the person can also withdraw money tax-free from RSP account for uh, buying his first house. So if the person is a first-time house buyer, he can borrow up to $25,000 from his RSP account, but he has to pay back that $25,000 uh, within 10 years and on, he will not pay any taxes on that 25000 Similarly, if the person wants to uh, spend money on the education, $10,000 can be uh, withdrawn tax-free from RSP account, but it has to be paid back. Uh, one important point to note is that whenever a person uh, withdraws money from RSP account, he cannot pay back uh, to the RSP other than the first time home, home buyer or for the education purposes. So the room for the contribution disappears uh, once the person withdraws. Uh, and the second point is important that uh, you cannot keep your money forever in your RRSP account because starting age 71, uh, RRSP account automatically converts into RRIF account, which is a registered retirement income fund and a person has to withdraw starting age 71 a minimum amount every year and then pays the taxes on that minimum amount according to the then uh, tax rate. A TFSA, which is a tax-free saving account, was started in 2009 in Canada. Uh, 
This uh, is also a tax advantage account because uh, whatever the contribution a person makes into that account, the money grows tax free and even at on withdrawal there is no taxes on the growth of the income or on the income. So the difference between TFSA and RRSP is that TFSA you don't get any tax break when you contribute but your money grows tax free. In RRSP you get tax break on your contribution but you pay taxes when you withdraw money. Uh, in 2020 the contribution room to TFSA is 6000 and if a person has not contributed at all into this uh, TFSA account, so since 2009, the, con cumul uh, the total contribution limit into your TFSA is uh, now 69500 So if you contribute that $69,500 into your TFSA account, that money will be growing tax-free. And you can withdraw anytime you want. And then, if suppose in year one, you withdraw some amount from your TFSA account for any purpose, you can pay back uh, that amount next year. So there is no compulsion that the room is uh, collapsed or there is no more room available. Every year there is a room to invest, about 6,000 plus inflation rate, whatever the inflation rate, so the room grows by the inflation rate, and they can withdraw and then pay back next year. And also you can keep your money in the TFSA account for indefinite period. There is no mandatory withdrawal limits uh, on your TFSA account as uh, it happens in RSP account because RSP you have to start taking money after 19 uh, after you eight, turn age 71 in TFSA there is no mandatory limit so now we have a question and the question is a tough one and I call this uh, the Canadian investment dilemma because we want to know should we contribute into RSP or into TFSA so it looks like uh, a very interesting uh, game theory problem that we use mostly in economics where we have uh, uh, two players and uh, two options and two strategies and then we pick up the best strategy compares the payoffs. So I applied the same uh, game theory approach to answer the question to determine which account is better for me uh, when I want to invest. So I have to decide which one is better, TFSA or RRSP account. So let's see, and I'll show you the results here. Now, this uh, game theory solution, and uh, the person has two lives. In the first life, he is working. In the other life, he is retired. There are two possibilities that uh, when he is working, he would have either high income or low income. And same thing, when he retires, he would have either high income after retirement or low income after retirement. So this gives us four possible solutions or four possible scenarios. The first scenario is that a person has high income while working and high income when retired. So doesn't expect any decline in his income and he pays the tax rate remains almost unchanged. In that case, whether a person contributes to RSP this time and withdraws, that he pays the same tax rate. So in that case, the best option for that person is to contribute into TFSA from his uh, after pay after tax uh, income, so that he whatever the money he makes in his uh, TFSA account, he can withdraw at least that uh, equity gain tax free. Second scenario is he has high income and low income. So of course, if his uh, income is high today, for example, forty percent. If, if, if his uh, tax rate is 40% and if, when he retired, his income goes down substantially, uh, maybe a tax rate goes down to maybe 20%, so the person is better off contributing into RRSP. However, one point in, is important to note here is that when we compare high income and low income after retirement, we should also consider the spousal income. So if the spouse of that person uh, expects low uh, income and low tax rate. So then this working person, whether he has a high income, should contribute into RRSP account because his uh, spouse would be able to withdraw at a lower tax rate and uh, his income uh, would generate uh, some benefits. Uh, third scenario is a person who's working has low income in working time but during a retirement, he expects high income. This scenario is possible because maybe the person 
uh, has uh, some inheritance or some uh, wins a lottery and gets high income and then his because of that high income his tax rate increases while he's uh, over 65 or when he's retired so in that case uh, it's better for the person to contribute into tfsa why because his income is low if he saves into rsp he would not save much into taxes and when he will take the money uh, out from our uh, from rsp account he would have to pay higher tax rate so it's better for this person whatever the savings he has while he is working and he is at low income category he should contribute into tfsa fourth scenario and the final scenario is a person who has low income now and retired when he retires he has also low income so in that case his person is indifferent between contributing or delaying its uh, taxes now versus later because if the person is making less income today his income tax rate is low today and when he retires his income is low and his tax rate is still low so he doesn't make any gain out of uh, the tax uh, defer account or rsp account so for this person if he has some saving he should contribute into tfsa so in total out of four scenarios three scenarios are going in favor of tfsa and only one scenario with high income during working life and low income during retired life sub suggest to contribute into rrsp so thanks for watching and uh, if you like uh, to know more about uh, upcoming uh, topics please subscribe to my channel press the bell button so that uh, you can be notified whenever there is a new video available thank